Bank Success of Fund. Hi, my name is Iza and I will start with the first bank sources of fund which is deposit account. Deposit account are important sources of fund that financial institutions can turn around and lend to others. In this video, there are three types of deposit that will be highlighted which are transaction deposit, saving deposit and fixed deposit. First is transaction deposit. A transaction deposit is also called a checking account current account or demand deposit account. Access may be in a variety of ways such as cash withdrawal, the use of debit cards, checks or even electronic transfer. Transaction accounts are liquid so the money that has been deposited is available to the account owner on demand and is available for frequent and immediate access by the account owner. Second is saving account. A saving account is a basic type of bank account that allow depositor to deposit money, keep it safe and withdraw funds, all while earning the interest. The rate depositor will earn on a saving account is generally variable. Typically, the more competitive the rate, the more likely it is to fluctuate over time. Changes in federal funds rate can also trigger institutions to adjust their deposit rate. Last but not least is Fixed Deposit. Fixed Deposit is a form of investment where a certain sum of money is placed for a fixed period of time to earn interest. The depositor cannot withdraw the fund until specified maturity. Fixed Deposit investment usually carry short-term maturity ranging from one month to a few years and will have a variety levels of required minimum deposits. The interest earned on a fixed deposit account is slightly higher than the pay on the standard saving. The increase rate is because access to the money is limited for the time frame for of the fixed deposit. However, fixed deposit do not keep up with the inflation. Nowadays, after COVID-19 strikes Malaysia, the government had to reduce a lot of things including the interest rate. The inflation rates are also affected by this pandemic. First is the interest rate. Malaysia has lowered its interest rate from 2% to an annual rate of 1.75%. The key rates are a tool used by a central bank to implement monetary policy. A reduction in interest rate counters a weakening of price or a possible deflationary situation. On the other hand, Malaysia inflation rate keeps on rising. Malaysia inflation, as measured by the Consumer Price Index, rose 4.7% year-on-year in April 2021, which is the highest since 2018. In a statement today, Department of Statistics Malaysia, Chief Statistician Datuk Seri Dr. Mama Uzi Mahidin said that the trend is expected to continue until the first quarter of 2022. I will be continuing with bank capital. Bank capital generally represents funds that acquired through stock issue and retained earnings. The primary capital which is common or preferred stock or retained earnings. Although the issuance of new stock increases a bank's capital, it dilutes the bank's ownership because the proportion of the bank owned by the existing shareholders decreases. Reported earnings per share also reduced when additional shares of stock are issued unless earnings increased by a greater proportion than the increase in outstanding shares. The secondary capital consists of issuing subordinate notes and bonds. Banks own some fixed assets such as land and buildings. However, they are less likely to issue bonds compared to most other corporations because they have fewer fixed assets. In 2017, the Bank Negara Malaysia stated that banks and investment banks are no longer required to maintain a reserves fund. Instead, they must maintain a set minimum amount of capital funds at all times. Uh, this is introduced as an important entry and ongoing requirement to ensure a banking institution maintains a minimum size of capital to operate and perform its intermediation function effectively. 
Now, I will complain about boring from Federal Reserve Bank. Okay, there are four things that you must know. Okay, the first thing is the Federal Reserve District Bank supervise some banking activities and a supply bank with short-term loan. And second, the charge interest interest rate is the prime credit lending rate. The third, borrowing in the discount window is another term for it. And lastly, it's typically used to address a short-term cash shortage. Based on what I have presented just now, okay, right now I am going to give you one situation that had happened in Malaysia and related to it. Okay, based on Bank Negara Malaysia BNM, on 20 November 2022, Malaysia's official reserve is set total USD 105.3 billion. Okay, other foreign currency holding total USD 1.51 billion during the same period. And according to the International Monetary Fund (IMF), the complete breakdown of international reserves in line with the IMF Special Data Dissemination Standard format give forward-looking information on the quantity, composition, usage of reserves and other foreign currency assets, the federal government's and BNM's estimated prospective future foreign exchange flow, and lastly, outflow during the next 20 months. Bank Uses of Fund When we talk about Malaysia, when Negara really have important role, we can see that in January 2020, BNM imposed a cash transaction limit CTL from 50,000 ringgit to 25,000 ringgit. Why? Because BNM want to strengthen the country's financial integrity and capacity activities. So the CTL will be applied to all transactions involving physical cash payments including payments of goods and services and donations and also transfer between parties which are applicable to individuals, businesses and also other entities. So the cash transaction limit CTL will fall under the currency bill. So the currency bill will help the BNM to ensure that BNM remains as the sole authority over the Malaysian currency. There are two exemptions for the CTL which is the first one cash transaction related to the financial institution because this institution already subjected to anti-money laundry. Secondly, cash transaction related to humanitarian as, rec as recommendation by the BNM for getting approval uh, of Ministry of Finance. Investment in securities is one of the bank's uses of funds. It helps in generating higher rates of returns of funds to provide loans. We'll be focusing on corporate and municipal bonds. Corporate bonds is debt instrument issued by a company to raise capital, while municipal bonds issued by a city, town or state to raise money for public projects. Both of the bonds offer high return, and they also have tax assumption as stated. According to RAN Rating Services for High, there is an increase from 5.4 billion to 23.8 billion ringgit Malaysia of corporate bond being issued in 2021. This update brings great benefits to Malaysia. By attracting large number of lenders, Malaysian bond is included in global bond indices and lastly help in stabilizing companies' finance. Bank also provide real estate loan. They give residential and commercial real estate loans. For residential real estate loan, the maturity on the mortgage is typically 50 to 30 years. Although shorter term, mortgage with a balloon payment are also common. So the balloon payment is like lump sum payment which is attached to a loan, mortgage or commercial loans. 
And during COVID-19 in Malaysia, the impact of the pandemic is quite significant when a real estate mar- real estate market falls by up 25% by location and type of property. So, Bank applied the concept of moratorium, which is deferment of repayment of bank loans to control and slow the collapse of the real estate market. That's all from us. Thank you.